Welcome. In spring 2020, I started a new seminar at the Hochschule für Musik und Theater Hamburg called Guitar Lab. Out of this work came the idea to ask a young composer to write a new piece for electric guitar quartet. The aim was to accompany and to document this project. And you, Juan, you were suggested to us by your teacher, Professor Dr. Georg Haidu, who is head of the Department of Multimedia Composition. And what did you think first when you heard that you could write a new piece for Electric Guitar Quartet? Yeah, well, I was super excited, super happy, super curious to see what I would do. Um, I had written before for acoustic guitar, but never for electric guitar, much less a quartet. Um, but I do have a relationship with the electric guitar. I'm a drummer and I've played all my life in rock bands. So I was very interested to see what I could do with the, with the electric guitar. Yeah. Uh, the electric guitar plays a very specific role in the history of music. First of all, it's the instrument of uh, blues music, of, of rock and pop music, of course. Did this iconic position of the guitar influence you in your composition process? Yeah, like I just mentioned, um, I've played in bands my whole life. I also grew up listening to rock. I studied jazz drumming. So this has been my relationship to the guitar. And I thought either I try to break completely with this for this piece and completely ignore the fact that the guitar is such a strong symbol or I put it into the piece. And I definitely went for the, for the second option. When you, you come from Colombia, a country that is certainly very different from Europe and from Germany, are there influences um, of the Latin American musical language in your music? Um, the simple answer is no. Okay. <laughs> um, and the more um, complicated? A more complicated answer would be, I, I, I don't usually include elements of let's say, traditional folkloric music. Mm. Um, but but from, did you play Columbia? folkloric music in your... I've played, I've played, my relationship with folkloric music is interesting. I mean, I think this is the case for many people who grow up in big cities mm. nowadays. So I grew up in Bogota, the capital of Colombia, a huge city. And my father loves the Beatles and my grandfather Me loves too. Beethoven. Um, so... I really did not grow up listening to Colombian folkloric music yeah. or Latin American folkloric music, but rather rock and jazz and free improvisation, noise scene. So there is a spirit of where I come from in, in the music that I make. So maybe it's not in the form of folkloric traditional musical languages, but definitely some sort of spirit of the city where I'm from. Um, as the director of this project, I was present at almost every um, rehearsal and saw how the piece developed, which also gave me an extremely interesting insight. How would you describe the composition process? Yeah, so at first, when I first got your email, I was in Colombia, mm. stuck there because of the pandemic. I couldn't return to Hamburg, so I ended up staying five months there. Um, so I was really wondering um, when this piece would actually happen. Yeah. Um, I, I said, yes, of course. And then I thought, when am I going back to Hamburg? <laughs> I have no idea. So I ended up returning in August 2020. So I would say that those first four months were uh, a process more of reflection, thinking, listening to music and thinking, what could I do? Mm but not really starting to work. Once I got here, I started to develop the notation for the piece, um, learn and try out and experiment with how I could uh, use different notational models for the piece, what technologies I could incorporate. Mm. And then we started meeting with the players, trying out things, but I, had, I didn't have a clear idea of the structure yet. So I was trying out this idea, this idea, and this idea. And then I left the rehearsal and thought, what, what am I gonna do with mm -hmm. all these like, pieces of music that I have? Um, and that was the next process, the next uh, stage mm. of, the, of the process, which was actually putting everything together and 
And I, I as, as is usual in my case, I had to do this under a lot of pressure because I had to finish the piece. <laughs> uh, so I really took my time in the first stages, thinking, mm. reflecting, trying out things. And then suddenly I have very little time to finish. Mm. But this is, this is a lot of pressure, but also a lot of excitement mm. and a lot of uh, adrenaline to finish a piece. Yeah. In our electric guitar quartet, we had players from all over the world. Max Diversi is originally from Australia. Lucas Echeverria is from Brazil and Paul Linadatos, I think he has some Greek roots, but was raised in Germany and uh, born in Germany. The three of them are jazz uh, guitar students and we also had Jan Graf from Germany who was studying classical guitar. How was it for you working with all these different people with their different musical background? Yeah, so when you first approached me, one of the things that most interested me about it was the fact that they were jazz guitarists mm. um, and not classically trained. Um, this immediately gave me the idea to write perhaps not such a serious contemporary classical music piece, but rather a more playful, um, with a more jazzy, rocky spirit to it. Uh, and this definitely happened. So uh, Lucas is really into Brazilian music, but he's also very playful, I think, if He's done a bit of improvisation, so he was very playful during the rehearsals. He played things that were not written just to try them out, and I love that. And if, if he ended up actually playing things that were not in the score, I was perfectly okay with that. Um, Paul was very concentrated, very interested in, in the details. Um, asking me, what does this mean? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? Max, he, he's really into like prog rock and prog metal, and he's a super virtuoso. So it was very funny because my piece is not at all a virtuoso piece. Mm. So he, during the rehearsals in breaks, he would play this virtuoso passages, and then he played my piece, and he kind of had to settle down and play these small details. Uh, and finally, Jan, He's a classical guitarist, but he's also, he also plays rock and punk music and he's in bands and he has this, also this attitude and this, this sound. He has this really nice distortion pedal, which we used. So yeah, it was great working with them and seeing how different they all, all were. Um, as you just mentioned, um, the electric guitar quartet, quartet features a classical music student and three jazz students from the Music Hochschule playing together. To what extent was experimenting with sounds offered by the musicians an inspiration for, for you? I remember uh, empty uh, peanut cans uh, instead of using a, a bottleneck for sliding and so on. Yeah, yeah. initially I, I had the idea of using some sort of slide sound, which actually is part of the piece, and I wanted this more noisy, scrapey sound. So I bought these peanut cans and I ate the peanuts and brought it to them and we <laughs> laughed about it and we made jokes. Um, the piece eventually doesn't, we didn't use the, the peanut cans, but this was part of the process. And mm. um, it was very interesting just to have to work with each one of them, not only how they play and what they like, but just the fact that some of them have some pedals that others don't. So. Mm. I would say, I want a distortion pedal. And three of them have a different distortion pedal, and then Lucas doesn't have a distortion pedal. So it's, it's really nice to kind of discuss with each one what sound um, I want. And this is also part of the piece. So I don't really specify so precisely, actually I don't specify at all, the type of sound that I'm expecting. Um, so it's, it's really up to the players to decide what their sound will be like. And I really like that each player is very differentiated or somehow differentiated. So this was a whole process of choosing the, the sound, choosing the pedals and trying things out. And it was a very nice way to work. For your piece, you have chosen an innovative form of notation and you used the music software Max MSP. Can you briefly explain us uh, how the notation works and how the music software, the Max MSP, works? Yeah, so my first idea was to create some sort of 
scrolling score that uh, the players can view on tablets. And this score is not a fixed score, so it's not identical every time. Um, and for this, I used Max, and this allows me to generate new parts of the score during each performance. So actually, I can, it's best if I just show how it actually works. So here I have the software, Max MSP. And here is one of the iPads that the players used during the performance. And um, if I connect them together through a network, they are now connected to the same Wi-Fi. I can send information from my computer to this iPad. This is a browser, it's just Google Chrome, it's an internet browser. And I could just tell it, draw a line, draw dots here, put numbers. So this is basically how I build the, the notation and the score. And then I tell it to move, and this is how it scrolls. So I will show the layout of the piece. This is the notation that I used. It's a basic tablature notation, so I was also interested in this kind of, you know, guitarists, amateur guitarists, when they learn to play rock and they're young, they're reading tap. So I was attracted by this idea at first. And then we have this diagram of the instrument, and this is to, gen to create um, lines that indicate movement throughout the guitar, especially with a slide. So I will show, for example, for example, this line, and they will, they will follow this line as a sort of real-time choreography. And this is uh, how I created the notation for the piece. So with Max MSP, I, I actually control everything, also the audio, the light. So here I have my different modules, so I'm controlling my score with this messy patches. Um, here I can control lights, so if I were connected to a DMX interface, uh, I could control lights, which is in fact what happens during the piece. And I also have audio control. I can take the sound of the guitar players and record a piece of it and then play it back or play it faster or repeat it uh, many times, uh, which are actually some of the processes that I use in the piece. So this is a very beautiful software that actually allows us, um, the users, to connect different things and to control uh, from one computer or, or several, uh, to control everything that we want in our piece. A few weeks ago, the premiere of your work took place, unfortunately, without an audience due to the pandemic. Um, it was realized as a video production and the visual component also plays a major role in the composition in this, in this piece. Can you please describe um, what was particularly uh, important to you in this presentation? Yes, yeah, so uh, we had the opportunity to record it at the Kraftwerk Bille, this beautiful industrial abandoned building here in Hamburg. And once I knew that this was going to happen, since it was really not possible to have a live performance, I decided that I would incorporate light into the piece as well, since this was such a special setting and it was more of a video production. I got even more interested in the visual aspect of it. So I included lights into the piece and created this kind of very obvious but very strong relationship between sound and light. Um, and afterwards, just editing the video is a bit like continuing to compose the piece. So it feels very similar to edit a video and compose a piece. You just have to make these decisions and it definitely turned out being a very visual piece as well. Once again, back to the guitar. It is certainly not easy for composers to write for the guitar. On the one hand, um, there are certainly a whole series of uh, limitations, and on, on the other hand, special um, possibilities that the instrument offers. Can you talk about uh, how the limitations on the one hand and um, the possibilities of the guitar on the other hand had influence on, on your 
composition? Well, it's funny with the guitar. Usually when, when a composer writes, it may be the case that they get the instrument that they're writing for and somehow get familiarized with it, how it works, and try some things out. Of course, we can't learn to play all the instruments in the world. Um, but with the guitar, I actually can't play guitar. I have a, a condition in my arms, and I cannot rotate my forearms. So it's impossible to me to hold a guitar properly and therefore to actually play it and see how it feels and understand how it really works. So it's a bit of an abstract relationship, but that also really interests me. And I have this fascination with, with this. So I think you can somehow tell from the way I chose to work with the guitar and the notation. Uh, it's not so idiomatic. Um, it's more of a choreographic thing, you know, so I, I see the guitar and I can't hold it, I can't play the repertoire or play anything. I just see it as an, an object that I can uh, do things on and do things with. And this is a bit how my approach uh, was towards the instrument in, mm. the, in the piece. I know from the guitarists of the quartet um, that they enjoyed working with you very much and doors have opened for them to new worlds of sound that they probably would not have experienced in their normal university environment. Um, the music you write is certainly not intended for, intended for a mainstream audience. What function should your music have and what audience should be addressed by your music? Yeah, well, it's, I, I'm a composer and I'm here at a music school. Uh, so it definitely is a contemporary music piece and I can't really pretend that it, that it isn't. Mm. But I definitely try to incorporate into, both into this piece and in general, something I, I try to do with my music is incorporate elements of other musics, musics that I really enjoy, such as noise and rock and experimental, I don't know, metal or extreme improvised music. So I really like my music to be kind of harsh, extreme, attention capturing. So maybe the audience doesn't like it. Maybe they're annoyed by something in it. Maybe it's too loud, maybe it's too harsh. But that's something that, I, that I, I'm okay with mm. happening. What I try to avoid is that they get bored or mm. distracted. <laughs> so it's, I, I usually try to capture the attention of, of the audience. And I'm just glad if anyone likes it. You know, usually when I, when I write a piece, I think a lot about my friends back in Colombia with, with whom I make music. And just thinking, will they like it? If, if I play it there, will they enjoy it? And um, if the answer is yes, then I'm happy. <laughs> As I said before, the world premiere of your work took place a few weeks ago. And in a few weeks, uh, there will be another performance of the piece here in the Musikhochschule. Yeah. Um, does your piece have a title by now? Um, yes, it does. Uh, I, I really struggle with titles. It's usually the last, very last thing I do mm. uh, with a piece. And it's usually just a very random process of looking at books and finding just any phrase or a phrase that kind of captures my attention. Um, in this case, the name of, of the piece is Sinostosis Radio Cubital, which is Spanish for Radio Omar Sinostosis, which is the condition that I actually have in my arms. Mm -hmm. So it's, I was just thinking about what can I name it, something that has a relationship to the piece, but doesn't try to describe what it is about, because it's not about anything, it's just... Uh, light and sound. Um, but with a band that I play with back in Colombia, Hermanos Menores, we also have a song called Sinostosis Radio Cubital. So the title is both like a tribute to this band and my friends and my background. And there's a big influence of this band in this piece, but it's also a, a tribute to the condition in, in my arms that, that defines my relationship to the, to the guitar. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Juan, for this interview and for, sure. the, for the very interesting um, answers and explanations. Yeah. Thank you, Heiko. And 
Thank you uh, for watching our interview and for listening to the informations. You can find extra material on the website of the Hamburg Open Online University. Um, for example, the performance video of the new piece for Electric Guitar Quartet and some additional information that uh, might be interesting for you. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.